We started from the top. Number one, what made you want to become a Navy SEAL? My father. My father was a SEAL. All his friends were SEALs, and that was essentially the only thing I grew up with. I definitely didn't have a normal childhood. My dad probably did. Probably eight deployments by the time I left the house, so he was gone the majority of my time. And when he came home, I just thought it was the coolest thing. Big kit bag full of dirty ass clothes, big watch, cool stories, and I just thought it was the coolest thing on earth. So when I had, uh, I had the opportunity to join, I definitely wanted to. He was definitely the inspiration behind joining the Navy and being a SEAL. What's the camaraderie like in the SEAL teams? And does the, keen, does the team chemistry help while on a mission? 100% it helps. It's tight, man. You know, it's like um, a professional football team, any kind of tight-knit sports team, it's the same thing. The locker room smack talk, the uh, the pressure to perform, putting the group above yourself, it's all the same thing. And then really when you get a bunch of guys who are only there for one purpose, to be the best they can be and to make that team as good as it can possibly be, it really makes you fall in love with it. And that is the secret sauce. When you get people to do dangerous acts because they want to, because they really want to help the team and they're willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good of the team, that's when it becomes really that next level. When everybody elevates up just a little bit more because they know they have to, it's like, that's a secret sauce. Like I'll do whatever it takes to be a part of this team. And when you get people with full buy-in, it's just, it's magic, man. Like it is, it's a humbling thing to see. When you see that many people completely committed to one singular focus, I don't know, like there are very few things I've seen in my life that have been that impressive. And that's one thing that when I think back on my time in the teams and things that have that have set me back and just gone, whoa, the commitment to the team, to see that many people that are just locked in, they'll sacrifice everything for that one cause. It's cool. And it's, it's very cool to have taken part in that. The chemistry definitely helps because there are times in the teams, there are times overseas when it gets super dicey, super hairy, or you're preparing for something that you know could be the last thing you ever do again. And when the group dynamic isn't filled with fear, it's filled with positivity and focused on training and being better, it makes it so much easier because they're not scared. They're not, if they are, they're not showing it. They're showing focus, precision, planning, meticulous in their thought process, and it really builds confidence in the group. So where you might be super scared to do something when you look left and right and they're not, they're just oozing confidence. It'll spill over on you and you start to put it on. You're like, well, if he's not nervous, I've been trained just as much as he is. I'm like, okay. And you can feel the confidence in the room just go up. So yeah, team chemistry definitely helps. And that's what I tell guys to focus on the most. Build that team bond as tight as you possibly can. How did you overcome the physical and mental challenges of buds? I looked at it through a realistic lens. Every dude I have ever wanted to be like in my whole life Every person I've ever been introduced to that wore that little pin went through the exact same thing. They picked up that same log, they put that same boat on their head, they ran the same distance, they got in the same water, the same sand, the same push-ups, the same pull-ups. If they've done it, then I can do it. All I have to do is just push myself farther than I thought I could go. And when you look at it like that, there's nothing they're doing that's impossible. There's nothing they're doing that, you know, the average person couldn't do if they trained a little bit. They were physically prepared, physically capable, and they were motivated to do it. So when you look at it like that, it's all been done before. All I've got to do is get in line and perform. And it really, it really leveled it all out. Like I'm not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just doing what I'm told at 100% of my ability. You know, it made it pretty easy to get through. When did you decide you wanted to be a Navy SEAL? My earliest memory. I can't remember anything really after that. I mean, I had, you know, wanted to be a vet, but not really. I didn't want to go to school. You know, want to be a professional skateboarder, but not really. It was always I was going to be a SEAL. And then when 9-11 happened, I was sitting in 10th grade, watched the first plane hit, watched the second plane hit, and then my 11th grade year, signed up for summer school classes, graduated early, and I was off to boot camp in November 2002. Though so I never did my senior year, I joined straight through. I went as early as I possibly could. And... I don't regret it. I mean, I was very young. I was very immature, but I was focused. Like I knew what I had to do. And you know, that was like our world war two. Like we just got attacked on the homeland. Everybody's, 
you know, everybody's selling war bonds. We're beating the war drum. It's time to join. It's time to enlist and serve the nation. That was really when we made, made a commitment. Like, I'm not going to finish high school. I'm not going to, I'm not going to skateboard. I'm not going to take two years and prepare. I'm not going to get an odd and end job over the summer. I'm going to do push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, run and swim, and I'm going to buzz right now. And that was really it. So, yeah, 9-11 was definitely, definitely the event that kicked me over the edge.